Okay, I've been listening to some Distillers records and I'm noticing a pattern, okay? And much like the Avril Lavigne replacement theory, I think Brody Doll has been replaced. But not by like labels or anything, by Tim Armstrong. So I'm gonna provide all the evidence necessary to prove that there has been a Brody Doll replacement. And this isn't by any means a new thing. This has been going on for years. So we have to put on our monocles and our double brimmed hats and go down this rabbit hole for some sleuthing. Hey ladies, how's it going? Dan Frampton here and we're gonna start in the year 2000 with the Distillers self-titled record that came out on Hellcat Records, okay? This is Tim Armstrong's label. Now if you're not familiar with the whole story, Brody Doll, you know, 16 year old girl in Australia, she's all starry eyed and wants to make her way to the bright lights of California to make some California punk, okay? So Tim Armstrong comes to Australia and they kind of form a connection, they start to love one another, okay? He's 30, she's 16, no big deal. Anyway, they form a relationship, they get married a couple years later, and then he puts out her record. And this thing hits the shelves and it just sounds like a female version of of Ranted. And I can't lie, it's pretty badass. But it almost sounds like she's doing a Tim Armstrong impersonation at times. Like for example, she's using Tim's signature snarls and slurs. And when I say slurs, I don't mean like derogatory language. I mean like slurring his speech, like the words mumble together. <laughs> but this record is fast, it's tight, it's snotty and full of attitude. And when you go back and listen to it, it's kind of like, oh my god, these two really were star-crossed ass motherfucking lovers, weren't they? Friggin' soulmates. But she seemed to be so inspired by Tim and Rancid, and it's very clear on this record, but that's part of the reason why it ruled so hard. But this record really didn't catch fire. It was the follow-up record, the sophomore release, Sing Sing death house that caught fire. Now this thing was released still on Hellcat Records and it's the one with City of Angels on it, okay? They're a huge blow up breakout hit. She's starting to sound less like a Tim clone and developing her own sense of snarls and attitude. It's still bratty and snotty, but she's finding her authentic voice here. There's a lot of classic tracks on here and at this point in the career, the distillers are on another level. The first two records are pure rippers, packed with bangers, clangers, slappers, and bops. But this is the point in the timeline, 2002, when tension is mounting in this lovely punk relationship, okay? So Tim and Brody, they're starting to see trouble in paradise. So they kind of do this little divorce thing and she kind of just like signs to a major record label after City of Angels blows up and after she used Tim for everything that he was worth. But don't get me wrong, I do think they are both kind of narcissistic people that used one another to advance their own lives. But that's not to say they didn't permanently get under one another's skin. So in 2003, the distillers put out this record over here, Coral Fang. It had an alternate uh, cover because you couldn't have this thing in Walmart. So the alternate cover is this one. Really cute with a bunch of animals or whatever. <laughs> and I'm gonna prefer to put this one on the screen. I like this cover a lot more. No, I can't do that. That's supporting the censorship of a band. So I'm gonna put up the original cover again. Look at this thing. But over on this record here, we're gonna find Brody Doll trying to distance herself from that California punk sound. She's a little bit less raspy. She's a little bit less snotty. She's trying to be more melodic, but I don't know. It's not really her style. It's kind of like grungy, garage, alt-rock type stuff, but I don't get it because Courtney Love and Shirley Manson already exist. There's no reason for this to also exist. The title track kind of teases the punk roots, but it's not enough. There's some cool ideas explored on this record, but ultimately this is when the distillers die. But we took the focus away from Hellcat Records and Tim Armstrong. We're gonna have to flip it back because you know, he's gotta be kind of losing his mind. So the year after Coral Fang comes out, Tim signs the Horror Pops, and they put out a record called Hell Yeah in 2004. Now this is more of a Psycho Billy thing, this is more of a horror punk type thing, and the vocalist Patricia Day is much more melodic than Brody Doll can even imagine being. But if I'm being honest with you, she sounds more like Danzig than Brody at this point. But some of those raspy, snotty qualities do start to reap their head when she gets into her higher registers. And by higher registers, I just mean when she starts screaming a little bit. <laughs> but on the track Where They Wander is where they drop one of the biggest Brody Doll breadcrumbs. It's a fun, cool little album and they're fusing genres together like true Hepcats, but there's not quite enough evidence on here to really support a full Brody Doll replacement theory.
But in 2005, they're going to continue on with the same trend. And this time, instead of playing the double bass, we got Patricia Day smashing the double bass on the cover over here. The first thing we hear when we press play on this record is a really Brody Doll-esque sounding voice go, yeah, 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 before a song kicks in. The song is called Freaks in Uniforms, and I'd be damned that they didn't suck the essence out of Brody and just implant it into Patricia over here. But as you go through the record, you know, there's not a whole lot of Brody Doll worship going on. There's some raspiness here and there. It's peppered throughout. There's still not enough evidence to fully support it, but there is enough to keep looking. So the next and last Horror Pops record would be this one over here, Kiss, Kiss, Kill, Kill. And it's a lot of the same stuff. We are getting a few breadcrumbs that are making me go, okay, Tim, I know you're thinking about Brody and you really wish that she'd be back. But then if we spin the lens over to Brody's side of the world, she puts out this record in 2009 after the Horror Pops are all done. I don't know if that's a coincidence or whatever, but that's really piquing my interest, okay? The Horror Pops finish, and then Brody Doll pops up again with this record, Spinneret, okay? This is what she called her solo project at first, and it really is as trashy as it looks over here. Gone are the punk snarls, no more bratty attitude, okay? So I guess Brody Doll just wants to be a grunge-ass version of Metric. There's even a few electronica elements put in. But then she waits five more years, and in 2014, changes her solo project to her name and puts out Diploid Love. And this thing is a lot more impressive than the last effort, okay? There's some bops on this thing, there's some catchy moments. It's still not a great record and it's still not the Brody doll that everybody fell in love with back in the year 2000. But it must have really got Tim going because now Brody doll is out there doing her thing, kind of thriving. So Tim goes out and signs the interrupters and this is when the theory cranks into full gear. It's official. Brody has been replaced by Amy Interrupter in a ska band. This is like Tim Armstrong's ultimate wet dream. The raspiness is there, but it is a lot more melodic than Brody. It is less snotty, but the attitude is still huge. She's a strong vocalist and a very good front person. The song White Noise sounds like an Op Ivy song sung by Brody Doll. It's kind of freaky. But on the song Family, when it features Tim Armstrong, my mind is blown. I just can't take it. So it might not be a romantic Brody Doll that he has in his life, but it is the Brody doll replacement musically that he's been looking for ever since the year 2000. And this Brody doll doesn't want to do like stupid ass punk rock music. She wants to do the ska music that is like Tim's roots or whatever. So he is all over it. And in 2016, the Interrupters put out Say It Out Loud, and it's a pretty good record. It's not as good as the first record. But in 2018, they put out Fight the Good Fight, and this has a lot of pop bangers on it. And it's kind of where they broke out. They didn't really go mainstream success but the song She's Kerosene really did bring them to new levels. But last year, in the year 2022, they put out a record called In the Wild, and that raspiness and snottiness is on full display here. Now, if you know an Interrupter song, you know all Interrupter songs. They kind of just do the Interrupters, and that's okay. There's not a lot of evolution going on throughout their catalog. They kind of just do what they do, album after album. But they do it super well, and it scratches a specific itch, so don't fix what's not broken, right? But all the breadcrumbs that we saw through the Horror Pops era led way to the Interrupters era, and I think that that is 100% proof that Brody Doll has been replaced. Okay, if you like the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Ring the bell if you're cool as hell. And I'm gonna put a couple videos at the end here that haven't gotten a lot of views, so click one of those. Okay, bye. <music>